Committed to Miramar is a weekly radio talk show hosted by Commissioner Darlene Riggs and longtime Miramarian Sherry Abden. The purpose of Committed to Miramar is to keep you in tune with what's happening in the beautiful city of Miramar, covering topics from healthcare, entertainment, employment, to education, politics, and much more. Turn in every Wednesday at 5 p.m. to Radio Uni Latina USA. Use hashtag Committed to Miramar. Hello, Miramarians. I'm Commissioner Darlene Riggs, Commissioner of the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city of Miramar. And I am here with my co-host, Sherry Abden. Hello, Miramar. I hope everyone had a very safe and happy National Night Out. That was awesome. We went throughout the city for National Night Out from 441 all the way to the Everglades. We got home after 10. Yes, yes. <laughs> It was extremely exhausting (laughs) and exciting. And you know what I love? Last night was amazing. Amazing. We got to cross paths with a lot of our first responders and we saw them educating the community on how to stay safe because our job is to make sure that our community is safe. It's it's one of the top um, priorities, and we take that seriously. And thank you, Miramarians, for coming out and taking part of that. It was a great way to unite the residents, neighbors meeting neighbors, um, law enforcement meeting residents. Commissioners were out there, especially Commissioner Riggs, who is just amazing with uh, with the residents, listening to their concerns and taking care of their needs. That's my job, and I love it. I enjoy it, and, you know, I look forward to it every year, and I'm glad it didn't rain. The last two years, it rained and ruined National Night Out, but last night was amazing. Thank God it didn't rain, and thank you, Mayor Marians, for coming out. So today, we are going to do something very, very unique that is much needed. We are going to take this hour to educate you, Mayor Marians, on what the city of Miramar offers, and we're going to walk you through the city website what you can um, obtain information-wise on the city website, how it works. So first thing first, our website is miramarfl.gov. So the moment you go into miramarfl.gov, you will see the beautiful city of Miramar logo. You will see city hall picture, just gorgeous. So first thing we're going to talk about is creating an account. So how do you do that? So once you log on to MiramarFL.gov, you will see on the top left-hand corner, create an account. So once you click on that, it's just going to ask you some simple information, your name, first name, last name, email. If you're going to create a password. And if you choose to, you can upload a photo. It's up, it's up to you. You can go ahead and read you know, the terms, agree to them, let the computer know you're not a robot. <laughs> and then once you do that, this is the great thing about doing that. We have a weekly newsletter that we send. Once you register and create an account, you get that weekly newsletter every Sunday Sunday. evening it comes out. Do you receive it? Yes, I do. And I look forward to it because it reminds me of events that I want to make sure I attend. Exactly. And you know, looking at the one that came out this past Sunday, we had some information in there from our police chief, the one and only Chief Dexter, who was here last week educating the community on his department and his responsibility and all that he has going on in order to keep us and our families safe. So he had a message for us Miramarians. We also had some affordable housing incentive report to give to you. We had some early voting information. We had um, some news for you about Havana, you art lovers. We have this Um, fundraiser for the um, multi-Miramar Cultural Trust that's actually taking place tonight from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at um, Davie. It's 15531 Sheridan Street in Davie. We also had some information for you about National Night Out, which took place last night. So you see how you want to go ahead and create an account and register so that you can get all this good information. I see something on here, Miss Abden, called Fruity Fruity, fruity Fun Time. What is that? I'm not quite sure, but it certainly looks like fun. It sure does. It says Fruity Fun Time with Anna Banana. I, 
<laughs> I think parents would love to take their kids for the children. It looks like there is music. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. And we, of course, had some information about Jamaican um Celebration. We had two events um, yes. for Jamaican Independence Day celebration in the beautiful city of Miramar. So all of that, some of the stuff, you know, took place already. Some of it is coming up. So you want to go ahead and register so you don't miss out on anything anymore. There's another awesome event coming up on August 17th. Yes, Burgers and Brew. And I'm definitely in for the burger. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's in for the brew. <laughs> That's August 17th from 11 p.m. I'm sorry, 7 p.m. to 11 11 p.m. at our one and only Town Center Plaza 2300 Civic Center Place and of course the beautiful city of Miramar it's because a, it's right it, here in Miramar. <laughs> it's a beautiful location. Absolutely. We also have Hispanic Heritage coming up in September but we're updating you now on our e-magazine called Our Miramar Today. So once you register and you start receiving emails that says the city of Miramar, Our Miramar Today, open it. Check it out. See what's coming up because you'll want to take part of it. Our, our Hispanic community, I've never missed one of those. I'm looking forward to that. And every time I go, somebody teach me how to cha-cha. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Again, that's September 22nd. It's a little ways away. And that will be at Miramar Regional Park out west. It looks like we have some amazing artists on there. I see Provecto Uno. Mm. So nice. Grito, uh, siete. Numero siete. <laughs> Seven. I said that right. Siete. Wow. <laughs> DJ Willie will be there. So there's a lot of awesome things for our Hispanic community. Because you know here in the beautiful city of Miramar, we are culturally um, diverse. So we yes. try and reach out to everyone. And you know what I love about this magazine also? It has something for the businesses as well. So we have what we call Miramar U Card. So if you're a business in the beautiful city of Miramar, Check that out because it has some incentives for you and some business resources as well. So, again, the very first thing you want to do is log on to MiramarFL.gov. Second thing is top left corner, you will see a little tab that says create an account. Go ahead and create an account. It should take you less than a minute. Just pretty much name, email, and creating a password and agreeing. So, beautiful. So, once you do that... You will see some tabs at the top hand corner for, for you to, to check out. There's so many things on this website. I, I think our staff has done an amazing, amazing job. Thank you to our OMPR team Definitely. that keeps this up to date. We have some topics like city government is Always. one. Right? Yes. I have my stuff under there. We have the numerous departments. So let's go under city government. So when you go into city government, there are a few topics that you can be familiar with. So, for example, if you want to reach out one of the commissioners or the mayor, so you have office of the commission. OK, so if you want to access information on the city commission and um, their meetings, that's a great place to go to do that. Um, for example, let's say some folks want to send a message to the mayor or you want to send a message to everyone. So once you click that, you will see the mayor, you will see the other commissioners you will see the vice mayor okay and if you want some information on the responsibility of the mayor and commission that's under that tab and the other thing too that's great you know we have commission meetings absolutely every Please. first and Wednesdays every first Wednesdays and third Wednesdays so sometimes depending on if a holiday falls on that day we might switch to a Tuesday but for the most part every first and every third Wednesdays we have at 7pm yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and it's always at our beautiful beautiful city hall so if you want to know more about that, please go on that section. It will give you a calendar. It will give you the dates and time, upcoming meeting. Because first, by law, we have to announce, you know, these meetings. So don't be afraid to access the city government section. Now, now some, what if I were a business owner and needed permits and 
that oh, yeah. type of information. That's one of the most frequent questions. So we have our department. So there's another tab for department. So that's the second tab. So once you click under department, my goodness. So you have from the city manager's office. Okay. If you have questions for him, the city clerk. I think the city clerk is probably the most popular department because they handle a lot Passport. of requests. Exactly. And mm-hmm. they do the... That's a good one. So I... Mm-hmm. Once you go under the city clerk, passport question is a question I get asked a lot. Okay. So the director of that department is Miss Gibbs. So once you click in, you will see her, you will see her title, her telephone number, her fax, her address, everything. And you also have some quick links to some other tabs. But under her department is also the section for passport. So you go under U.S. Passports. It's there on the left side. So you will get a schedule on when they're doing the um, passports. Passport. Mm-hmm. So if you, you can book an appointment. If you're walking, I believe there's certain days that you can walk in. Yeah. Okay. So check out that website to get all of that information. And I love it because it tells you, for example, which category you're in. If you've lost your passport, what you're supposed to, to do. do. If it's just expired. Or if you're bringing a child that that's under 16 or it's a split custody thing. So all of that information is on there. And of course, you could always call Miss Gibbs. Okay, she's oh. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> she truly is. So I love that section. What else with um with our city clerk? Another um, election. She handles the election questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another important one. And public records is another popular that's one a too. Big one. So if yeah. you need any type of public record, you can access her section and go under public records it will tell you the rules it will tell you the cost it will tell you the length of time if you have a request so that's a a very popular one she's very popular yes yeah and as she should be rightfully so and very professional dealt with her numerous times i would definitely a plus for her department kudos to miss gibbs in her department Another department that just crossed my mind. Oh, my community and economic development. Yes. You just mentioned them. Yes. They're probably, I, I think they're probably as popular as our clerk's office. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I would say yeah. so, or more so, because there's always a crowd. Yeah, and you know what? Because they don't just handle new businesses, they handle current businesses, yes. they handle renewals, they handle um, permits. They have so so yeah. much under the umbrella and they have to keep up with the different zone districts, inspection, housing assistance. So when you go under that area, there is, oh my goodness. Okay, so let's start with permits. Permits is, is one of those issues. So you're starting a new business or you're renovating your business, you're making some type of change. You need a permit. You need a permit for everything. everything. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the most difficult things or time consuming um, process so I love our website because number one we have something for you to help you walk through the process especially if you're new yeah. Because if you're new and you're going through this for the first time, you may need some assistance. So I love how our community and economic development has put together a package to educate, to walk you through steps one, steps two, steps three. So when we come back, we will continue with community and economic development to show you what their responsibilities are, what falls under their umbrella. Do not hesitate again to access MiramarFL.gov, create an account. I'm Commissioner Dari. Lean Riggs, you are listening to Committed to, to Miramar. Miramar, and we'll be right back. Hey Maria, congrats on graduating. Must feel good to be done with school. Yeah, well it is, but I still have to pass the NCLEX test in order to get a job. Okay, well, is the test difficult? Extremely, and I've already taken it three times and still can't pass it. Mm, what seems to be your major issue with the test? I don't know, maybe I don't have the right training. Or I don't really understand how to study for the test. <sighs> and I really want to start working as an nurse. It's so frustrating. Uni Latina International College is now offering a comprehensive NCLEX RN prep course guided by expert trainer Dr. Juan Carlos Ramirez. Finally achieve success and start your nursing career today. Learn more at unilatina.edu. 
Welcome back to Committed to Miramar. I'm Commissioner Darlene Riggs, your host, and I'm here with my co-host, Sherry Abton. Now, Commissioner, I know you were about to speak about permits, and I know for some of our businesses and residents, it can seem like a tedious process, and why do I have to go through this? But also keep in mind, our city is very uh, concerned about safety, and sometimes there are structures that really need to be looked at for a second time because it's about safety. Absolutely. And the length of time is also a concern for folks. And you just updated me on on a piece of information that is very valuable and important to our Mm -hmm. business owners. Yes. In reference to the time. Yes, Mm -hmm. and they have managed to um, speed up the waiting time by uh, 20-something minutes. So it's not uh, much of a tedious wait. But please be patient because that department, as Commissioner Riggs was explaining, they are handling a lot of different issues. Oh, my goodness. I'm the type of person, I always have to be in a couple places at once. So if I walk (laughs) in somewhere, I don't want to spend all day. Right. So to cut our waiting time to almost half an hour, yes. that's superb. So kudos to our department. Another aspect that falls under community and economic development is housing assistance. Yeah. We have so many of our residents, especially in historic Miramar, who are always asking for assistance with, with housing. And I'm glad to say that we have programs for first-time home buyers, for home ownership counseling, minor home repairs it's for example if you have plumbing issues roof issues tile those type of things you may qualify for some assistance so please check out miramarfl.gov go under the housing and community development department and see if there's something there that could help you because that's why we're here we try and get as much federal funds as we possibly can to pass them back onto the residents and other for them to save money um i believe that's my job yeah (laughs) and it sure is and i fight for every penny so I love that so another department that I think is probably I'm going from the most popular ones and making my way down so city clerk was awesome community economic development now our cultural affairs so those are art lovers <laughs> our um, family you know um, entertainment well those of you with large families and you need something to have your children do I would definitely recommend that you visit our um, multicultural site there are so many upcoming events that we have right here in the beautiful city of Miramar we have a beautiful theater absolutely that holds almost 800 and we always have summer programs for the children you know so go under what's happening so you can see what's coming up I see something that says um, what's happening. So when you go into what's happening, it'll give you the opportunity to sign up. And again, when you sign up, you get to know, you get the first email as to what's going on. What is MCC presenting? You know, what what are we up to in reference to programs and shows? So I've been always been a big fan of Selena. Yes. I see we have Selena Los Chicos del 512. <laughs> Cinco, uno, dos. Okay, hopefully I I, I, I pronounced that correctly. Oh my goodness. Love my Hispanic community. My Spanish is not up to par. I'm always working on that. Mm -hmm. I need more practice. So, cinco, uno, dos. (laughs) <laughs> I, I think that sounded good. Cinco, uno, dos. Okay, beautiful. So, Selena, we have that coming up on September 21st, I believe. So, check out the website so you can get your tickets and get them early. I'm always look, looking forward to the upcoming shows because for a while, before we had our beautiful center, I always went out to, to Fort Lauderdale mm. at the center there. And I'm thrilled to know that seven minutes I can be at our Miramar Cultural Center and see a show and not have to pay for parking. <laughs> right. We don't want our Miramarians leaving Miramar. If you can do something in Miramar, that's what we want you to do. And that's something I've been working on forever, trying to change the culture and yeah. the uh, mentality. If you are Miramarians, you should be thinking, is it in Miramar? If it's not in Miramar, which we have, you know, very small percent of stuff that we don't have. So for the most part, you will find it in Miramar. Miramar. So 
check it out. See if we have it. If we have it, go ahead and do it in Miramar. Support mm -hmm. our stores, our shows, Absolutely. our programs. We want you to live here work here play here and we mean it live here work here play here so and that's another thing that we do with our hr too we always want to make sure that you know we look at miramarians and making sure that they qualify for the positions that we're looking for and if you're a miramarian that's a great thing because you get you know um that opportunity yeah. so check out our career section so if you're looking for a job under the search section just go ahead and put career or put job and go in there and see what we have, what openings we have. You know, what do you qualify for? And go ahead and... Um check out our fairs we have so many career fairs that's yes. another thing i'm very proud of too um it's really good to just stay in tuned as to you never know it might be a friend of yours who may qualify for that position or been wanting to get into the city in that aspect so under search just go ahead and put job or put career in order to see you know what we have going on i know um pd is usually looking for for folks so they usually have the most openings but we have openings in hr openings in commission all over I the city i think they list those on our website yes they do so you can see little tabs that say apply for a job job posting what's available so go ahead and check that out and again if especially if you live here we again want you to live here work here and play here we have stuff for your children we have stuff for our seniors we're going to talk about that department in a, in a minute I ran into someone yesterday who said, thank you so much for, for fighting for, for our seniors during yes. National Night Out. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, got, that opened a whole can of worms of for course. me. And I had to get into that conversation because again, I believe as community leaders, we are advocates, whether we want to be or not. One day we will be a senior. <laughs> exactly, and we would want folks to fight for us. Yes. So that is something that is extremely important to me. I take that job seriously, so as an advocate, I know it's my job to speak for our seniors and our youth who aren't able to speak for themselves. Absolutely. So that what that young woman was talking about last night, I remember when I first became commissioner, one of the first thing that I did was I sat down with our seniors. Yes. And I'm not a very complicated person. First thing I said was, how can I assist? What can I do to help make life better, better. and easier? And I had a few seniors who said, well, we would like someone in the department who speaks Creole. Right. So I was very surprised to see that we didn't have anyone who spoke Creole. So at first I was like, what do you mean? And they explained to me that they would love to be able to communicate. We have um, four social workers at the time. This was 2015. We had four social workers. And out of the four social workers, some spoke um, English, of course, and Spanish. And the... Senior Center, we are so diverse. We have English speakers, Spanish speakers, Creole speakers, um, and some of them, you know, Spanish speaking is the only language. Creole speaking is the only language. So we should have staff that can communicate in, in, in many different ways. So all of our social workers, not one spoke Creole. So I went and sat down with our city manager at the time, and I told her, I said, you know, we don't have any employees at all in that department who speaks Creole. So she said she would look into it. So I said, okay, no problem. Months go by and I followed up. I said, whatever happened to hiring that Creole speaking social worker? And she said, oh, the bus drivers translate. But I'm thinking, wait a minute, the bus drivers just pick up our seniors from their homes and bring them to the senior center. Yes. They don't stay there all day and be able to translate as part of the everyday staff. So I said, that cannot be the solution. So months go by again. I said, you know, did you ever resolve that? Because I'm visiting the seniors and I see there's no one. They're still telling me the issue exists. So finally, I saw that I wasn't going to get the problem resolved. So during a workshop, I asked my colleagues for support in giving the city manager direction to hire a social worker who speaks Creole. And sadly to say, I did not get the support from my colleagues to do right. so. Mm -hmm. So that's when I ended up gathering the, the media. Oh, residents mm -hmm. too. Yep. I, I pretty much spread the word and um, put together a resolution 
in order to do so. So that, I don't know if you remember last year during that time where it rained for six days yes. straight. It was during yes. that period. And even during that time, we had so many people fill that auditorium just to be able to voice their concern about not having one social worker who speaks Creole and we have two senior centers one on each side of the city I believe at the time we had 68 employees in that department and that department if I'm if I'm um, not correct is a 5.9 million dollar department so why can we not hire one person who speaks Creole to communicate with a group of Creole speaking only so to me I was baffled by that and that's when I realized for my position it's it's time to wake up and be an advocate like truly 100% because I knew I was before, but I've never addressed anything to that caliber. So I was really sad, number one, that it got so far that because I really thought this was just an issue. Oh, I'll have a conversation with the city manager and that will be... And it would be done. Resolved. But that was not the case. It turned out to be a fight and I was sad to to see that. But today I can say we have three employees who speak Creole. All because of you and you made change. Positive change. Thank you. And and so many people came out in support. So I must say thank you to to those folks. I know we got off topic a little bit where we started talking about (laughs) our senior center and how we are, as leaders, we are an advocate for for our seniors and our youth. And I take that seriously, and I'm honored to do so. So, again, I'm very proud to say we are a city who now employs all, you know, um, the languages that we serve. So we have some um, seniors who only speak Spanish and we have social workers who speak Spanish. We have seniors who only speak Creole. We have social workers who speak Creole. And that's how it should be because I was trying to tell the city manager, what if God forbid, you know, they're sick and they need to tell you? You wouldn't understand. True. No one in the room would understand. So to me, every senior that I look at I see my mother. Right. And I would do anything and everything to make sure that she is in an environment where she's thriving, where she's safe. And I can honestly say today we have that type of facility here in the beautiful city of Miramar. Well, Commissioner Riggs also recently, just a few weeks ago, did a a luncheon, a brunch for our seniors. There were like over 200 seniors and they just thoroughly enjoyed themselves. There was a lot of dancing. Yes. I couldn't keep up. (laughs) I could not keep up. So go to our social service um, department. You will be able to see we have adult daycare. We have the Mirror Marvels, our early childhood um, academy. We have, of course, our senior services. And we have what we call youth and family outreach. So wherever you fall under that umbrella, please check it out. And know that we in the beautiful, beautiful city of Miramar, we're fighting for you. And we're advocating for you. We're making sure that everything that's in place is for for the best and we to you, your family so whoever comes into our center our adult daycare I visited when they had an anniversary because that is fairly new yeah. and I love hanging out with our seniors it's so knowledgeable and I'm one of those I have so much respect for our seniors they say jump I say how high <laughs> ma'am <laughs> I love them they pray for me and my family and I just always feel that love whenever I come and to their presence. So thank you to our seniors. Thank you to our youth. Thank you to our families here in the beautiful city of Miramar. Again, check out our social service department. When we come back, we'll continue with our social service department and update you on some of the things that our seniors are doing that are very exciting. They have a a in-depth, exhausting schedule, believe it or not. I don't think I could hang out one day. They go on amazing trips. Yes. Yes, they do. And, you know, and the other thing that I've I, I've always wanted to start in this year, maybe the year to do it, is a sponsorship program. Because sometimes you have some of our seniors who want to go ahead and go on those trips, but they can't, can't afford, afford it. it. Yes. So when we come back, we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about that section of the MiramarFL.gov website. Don't forget to visit that. And you are listening to Committed to Miramar with Commissioner Darlene Riggs and Miss Sherry Upton. We'll be right back. Unilatina International College with campus in Miramar, Florida, is a boutique college with focus on entrepreneurship. UIC offers associate and bachelor degree programs in business, tourism, and communications and media. Associate degree students develop their business plan while studying at UIC. Dream, learn, and grow. Join now our business incubator. Learn more at unilatina.edu or call 
954-607-4344. Committed to Miramar, live, work, and play. It's right here in Miramar. Committed to Miramar, committed to our community. It's right here in Miramar. Welcome back to Committed to Miramar. I'm Commissioner Darlene Riggs, and we left off talking about our seniors and our beautiful senior centers and our adult daycare. We are what you call South Central, Southeast Focal Point Senior Center, <laughs> and we are accredited by National Institute of Senior Centers, which we're very proud to be. And again, if you're a senior here in the beautiful city of Miramar, please log on to our website, MiramarFL.com. Gov, check out this portion of the website. You can register to be a senior in our senior center. We have door to door transportation. We can pick up pick you up from your front door, bring you to the center, and bring you back to your front door. We I have, can't wait to be a senior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, literally, just walk out your front door, bus is waiting, and they bring you right back. That's awesome. And we also have counseling and support groups. We have health and wellness activities. So let's go into the activity portion for our seniors. I'm telling you, I usually cannot, you know, keep up with, with this. So there there's sewing class, there's different language, there's, of course, exercise, nice. there's cooking. Oh, my goodness. Just one day, I, I do want to do that. I want to go and just be in the shoes of a senior to see, and I'll probably need a vacation afterwards. Let's not forget, <laughs> they're very big on their bingo. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, I remember one of the requests when I sat with them in 2015 for the first time was new bingo cards. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, well, I think we can do that i think we can renew these bingo cards so that's awesome very very proud um of that department another department that i i believe you should check out is our fire rescue department major major part of our community you know our first responders we're gonna go to um police in a minute but because it's hurricane season and um so we want to make sure you know you're well aware of our f police department and our fire department because we are in hurricane season we truly are and our fire department plays a major major role when it comes to um our our hurricane season so check it out they have so many resources and did you know you can even get your cpr card i know they have some cpr classes that yes. they do ongoing so check out um they have a tab called classes there is community a community emergency response team yeah that's always a great one that's a great course the cpr class of course and special events are fire department put so many events together and in addition to that they're always at our um, events that we do there's one they did recently um, with this young lady Rochelle's challenge and that was very heartfelt um, very emotional so when you get a chance go to our Miramar Fire Rescue and you know time wise response wise I believe we're one of the, the best you yes. know top mm -hmm. so very proud when I read stuff like that and knowing that wow we have such an amazing team here in the beautiful city of Miramar and um, very proud of them I am very very proud of them and you know we did something called this was two years ago we did something called fire ops 101 so fire ops 101 is where you get to be a firefighter you get to live a day in the life of a firefighter so i found out that day that i was claustrophobic oh. <laughs> when i put on the helmet I really felt like I was running out of oxygen. I the couldn't weight breathe. It was heavy, right? It was heavy and it felt like I was running out of air. Wow. And I told the firefighter, I'm like, I can't breathe. He's like, yes, you can. I'm like, no, how do you know oxygen is coming into this thing? So I totally freaked out. One of the first obstacles that we did was um, putting out a real fire. Oh, wow. Number one, the hose was so heavy. Oh, yeah. It really was. And the helmet was just everything. I'm like, the, the clothes, the boots, I could barely move in this thing. Yes. And they stepped it up a notch. So the next obstacle, we literally went into a burning building, crawling on the floor to come out on the other side. 
oh again i freaked out (laughs) (laughs) it's hot i would too i don't know how they do it but amazing i love those things it's called fire ops 101 and what it did was it it showed me what they go through you know on a regular we have a fire we're running out they're running in Mm -hmm. so much 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 respect goes to our first responders our firefighters who go into these burning buildings and save our families and our loved ones and that very last obstacle was definitely um a crazy one i couldn't i believe some of our elected officials did it but i opt out i was done for the day i'm like listen uh uh-uh the one obstacle we had to pull uh like a 90 pound mannequin out of the fire leave the mannequin (laughs) i'm telling you right so i i was struggling and i'm thinking this thing is super heavy and you have this head um gear on you have the boots it was just yeah so i have a lot a lot of respect for firefighters and i don't think i'm cut out to be a firefighter plus all the responsibilities during hurricane season yes. as well it's so and a quick reminder that our fire department would remind you is please don't use a generator in the garage oh, yeah. or barbecue inside the garage mm-hmm. with the gas or coal grill absolutely and you know do me a favor and go ahead and access our fire rescue department because they have some safety kits. They have a list of everything that you should have in your kit. Yesterday at the crime watch, yes, we learned a lot from our firefighters. They were all over the city trying to educate the community and they had a sample of a kit and what you should have you know the non-perishables and of course the flashlight and the batteries and you know cell phones aren't going to be working so a lot of that it was very educational and very important and they have that on their website under resources so check it out Um, they partner of course with our police department now, I definitely have a soft spot for four five oh, uh-huh. <laughs> and that might be because my husband is a retired Miramar police officer, thirty years in Miramar. He did thirty years in the beautiful city of Miramar, so he knows Miramar extremely wow. well. Yes, before anything west of Miramar was ever built, he was a police officer here. So I have a lot of love for our police officer, not even just for that because of my my husband's tied to it, but also I believe safety is extremely important as a nurse i am definitely embedded with maslow's hierarchy and besides your physical need we need water we need air we need food absolutely but once all of that is met safety 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 is priority so once you access our police department website you have um these little flash cards that go through one of the first ones is of course about the chief and his message so please take a look at that we are very blessed to have chief williams as our chief we have some amazing men and women that serve us again we're running away from the danger they're running to it so check out the safety tips that they have for you last week we talked about a little bit about the fire department's website and there's even information on how to survive if there's an active shooting those are not really conversations we want to have but they're they're vital they really are especially now in the day that we're living and we need to have those conversations so check out our website and check out information on that and again the chief has a a message on there for you and you can sign in to receive you know alerts on the police website so once you go on to miramarfl.gov and you create an account and you go under the police department's website you can then create an account in order to receive some some alerts and some messages so community programs for our, our police department Something that I really, really love that our police department does is the the fact that they're very embedded into the community. There's a great program that they have called Hanging with Five O. Oh, very nice. I think it's important for our children to grow up with the police. Yes. It really is because then that keeps them out of trouble, especially if they have a police friend, you know, whom they call friend, because then what they do is they behave because of that friendship. True. They really do. And they know if, God forbid, they ever do get in trouble, there's someone they can reach out to, someone who can advise them. So I love the fact that we've built that relationship with our children right here in the community. 
we have our chaplains we're so connected to our chaplains too we have quite a few who come to events and pray for us on a continual basis we have what we call citizens on patrol yeah chief talked to us about that last week that was awesome um Citizens Police Police Academy. Academy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you miss the Neighborhood Crime Watch, there's information in the police department about that. There's a tab just on that. And you know that's a yearly thing. So if you missed it this year, come out next year, join our community, learn. And you know, the other good thing too, you get goodies when you come to these things. You get, you know, one thing that I got one year that I still have in my car that the item that you use to cut the seatbelt, if God forbid you fall into a lake or something, that's an expensive one. Yes. Yeah, it has that. Pointy tip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Break the glass, cut the seatbelt. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I have that. It's hanging in my car. I pray to God I never ever need it, but it's there. And I know those are not cheap. Mm-hmm. So I believe in 2015 at a um, neighborhood crime watch is where I obtained that one and I would definitely recommend you come at least for the goodies and to be educated on how to stay safe. Again, you would get information from our fire department. Of course, police was there. We had SWAT. We had the FBI. Oh, that was cool. Yes. Very I took cool. a selfie. We got to know each other and I'm like, oh, you know, those are, and they had like this oozy looking thing that's the only thing I can call it and I was standing in front of it and I'm like I better not stand here (laughs) and he's like no there's nothing in there I'm like I don't know that (laughs) it looks so intimidating that thing looked like it weighed a good 20 pounds too so they came out they were showing our children their equipment which the children always love we've even had helicopters there for the kids to jump in and see and observe and ask questions you never know this might be what they want to do for their future so I love that we come out and we're part of the community and we're just yeah saturating the community so community we need you to meet us halfway come out next year get some goodies tell your neighbors and um some communities most of our communities did something most of our homeowners associations yes got involved and did something we ended up at um riviera isles and that was packed very that was packed and i think when we were leaving chief and i i chief and i ended up catching each other there and they were playing um bad boys Boys, bad bad. boys (laughs) so we were jamming just educating everyone and um you know i told the police there and chief and all who were involved that the police officers definitely have my support as a um, community leader as a commissioner because they know you know what it is that they need and i love sitting down with them and asking you know what is it that you need from the commission from myself in order to do what you do because priority for me safety safety of course for mm-hmm. everyone absolutely it should be yeah after our physical needs are met we want to make sure that you're safe in your neighborhood that like chief said a couple of weeks ago zero crime is what we want there's no percent that's acceptable Correct. okay we want your your neighborhood to be safe we want historic miramar west miramar all over miramar to be safe and we told you it's a little bit difficult because we're borderline so borderline you know with with our sister cities makes it a little bit difficult but our team has done such an amazing amazing job in keeping our crime low keeping us safe so we can't complain yeah. No, and they are covering an area of 14 miles long and 2.5 miles wide. Yes, Miramar is very unique in the sense that we go from 441 to Everglades, but yeah. you can drive through Miramar in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's from County Line to Pembroke Road is very short, but try doing that from 441 to Everglades, yes. especially, you know, during traffic hour. Yeah, you could learn another language. <laughs> That's when I need to practice my, my, my Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny with the with the Spanish. I know so much. I know a lot of words. I, number one, I don't have folks to practice with. But the good thing for me is that because I speak Creole, it's easier because some words are very similar or even the same. So I just need to go to a Spanish speaking country for a good six months and I'll come <laughs> back fluent. OK, so adios. No, <laughs> stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. You are listening to Committed to Miramar. I'm Commissioner Darlene Riggs, Commissioner of the beautiful city of Miramar, and I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Sherry Abden. We'll be right back because it's right here in, in Miramar. Miramar. Uni Latina International College offers an English as a Second Language program for international students. UIC's high qualified ESL teachers help students develop and master the English speaking and comprehension skills needed for both work and pleasure. Our ESL program also focuses on cultural adaptation through fun field trips and cultural experiences. 
Start your journey today at unilatina.edu slash ESL or call 954-607-4344. Committed to Miramar, live, work, and play. It's right here in Miramar. Hello, Miramarians. Welcome back to Committed to Miramar. I'm Commissioner Darlene Riggs, and we will continue with educating you on our MiramarFL.gov website because we want you to utilize that website. We want you to create an account. That way you get the Our Miramar newsletter that comes every Sunday. Okay, so when you go on our website, you have, again, the department. So check out the department. See what it is that you need, where you need to go. For example, some departments we didn't get to talk about. Some of them are more for in-house, you know, IT, HR. That's more in-house. But another one that I think is great for the community that serves the community is parks and recreation. Of course. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like to go out to the parks? You know, we are so unique here in Miramar. We have so many parks. We have a lot of parks, yes. (laughs) We have so many parks and facilities. Just amazing. So we have, of course, facility rentals. So check out that department if you're having a birthday party or celebration. Company gathering. Yes. Corporate parties. The holidays are coming up. Yes. Yes. So that is a section that will be beneficial to you. So check it out. I've had so many of my kids um birthday parties you know all over the city we have the Reunions closest one to me. too yes we have our miramar reunion coming up <laughs> that is august 25th where it's actually a three day a full weekend event so the 24th the 25th and the 26th the 24th is the football game okay with miramar high and our rivals and then the 25th is the picnic now i will i'm sponsoring that with Commissioner Barnes. So we are looking forward to that. We want all Miramar High graduates to come out. We're going to have old school versus new school. Now, I think I'm in the middle school (laughs) because I'm not, you know, class of 2008, but I'm also not class of 65. (laughs) I'm class of 98. So I like to think I'm in the middle, but we're going to have an old school versus new school competition. And there's a game that I wanted to play and we had a meeting about it today called Steal the The Bacon. Bacon. That's one of my favorite games. I used to be a game director for Awana. And that's one of the games that the children always request. So you put something in the middle, and that's the bacon. And you have two lines on one side, you know, a little bit ways, and you number them. Let's say one through ten, and then on the other side, one through ten. And then when you call one, both number ones run to grab Ah. the bacon. So whoever grabs the bacon first and gets to their side without being tagged, you get a point. It is so much fun. Fun. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm very competitive. I never I, lose. Oh. <laughs> Period. I never, ever lose because I give it everything I've got. So I'm looking forward to I just haven't decided if I'm going to be part of the old school or the new school. Uh-huh. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to see who's in the old school and who's in the in new school. New school. <laughs> then I'll decide who I'm joining. But I'm looking forward to that. Again, that is Miramar High reunion on August 25th. That will be from about, I believe... 3 p.m. till 6 p.m. at um, Wellman Park, yeah, in historic Miramar. So we'll give you more information on that coming up. And we also have um, our Beekman Park, Bernard Civic Center. My goodness, there are so many parks. So check it out. Depending on where in Miramar you are, if you have, again, a birthday party or um, a um, corporate event going on. And you know another thing I love that Miramar has, aquatic centers. Everyone should know how to swim. I spent a few years in the pediatric emergency room. And you don't know how many children I see that were near drowning. It is such a devastating thing to see. And the part that's really hard to understand is the fact that this is preventable. Yes. This is preventable. When I first became commissioner, one of the initiatives that I put together is to provide free swimming lessons. Yes. We have two aquatic centers in the beautiful city of Miramar. One east one west and the lessons are super inexpensive i believe it's 10 lessons for 35 dollars. so what we do is what my office does is we give you a voucher for free swimming lessons whether you are a child or an adult all you need to do is be a resident of the beautiful city of miramar 
So please check that out. Check our aquatic center. Call my office. Call my office if you need a voucher. You can reach us at 954-602-3152. And again, I hate seeing drowning victims because yes. at that point, yeah, there's not much life. And again, it is something that is so preventable. Well, here in South Florida, you're surrounded by a lot of lakes. Yes, we are. Yes, yes we are. Mm-hmm. I remember the first year we did it, we had 35 um, folks sign up and... From that 35, I asked the parents to raise their hands if they knew how to swim. One parent knew how to swim. (laughs) Can you believe it? So it's not just the children. Parents, you too need to know how to swim. And that initiative is very near and dear to me because in 2009... What year are we in? 2018? Yes. No, that had to be, because this is Gabriel. I go by my children's okay. birth. Gabriel was born, oh, he's going to kill me, uh, um. 2009. <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> so, it's so funny. My, my oldest son, mom, I'm like, well, there's so many of you. You know, I have to stop and think about it. Mm. So, Gabriel was born in March, and Mother's Day is in May. So Gabriel was two months old when I accidentally fell in a pool with him in my hands and I couldn't swim at the time. Thank God I had my friend with me. So I saw Michael, my oldest one. He was struggling a little bit in the pool. He had his noodle. He couldn't reach it. So I went, stepped down thinking there was a step in the pool Ah. and I fell in the pool with Gabriel in my arms who's two months old. Oh my. So I quick, thank God I work beautifully under pressure. (laughs) So I quickly pulled Michael to the side so he can grab the side of the pool and my friend saw what happened. She came to grab Gabriel from me. So I reach up, I'm underwater now, I reach up to give her Gabriel and he fell back into the pool. Oh, dear. So I grabbed him again and gave him to her. In the meantime, I'm underwater, drowning, not knowing <laughs> how to swim. So I gave her Gabriel again, and her son jumped in the pool and rescued me. Oh, wow. A mess. So I was traumatized. I'll admit, after that, I was traumatized for some time. Um, was very fearful of pools and water. But you know what? I had to talk myself into getting over that yeah and learning how to swim in case i needed to i'm just yes. not a water person i don't like going to the beach i'm super weird like that i rather watch a movie <laughs> we do family movie nights all the time I'm, but i learned to swim i overcame that fear just in case i needed to rescue my children again or somebody else's child right. so i can swim beautifully now and all of my children know how to swim. My very youngest good. one, Daniel, is still learning. He's three. But all the kids know how to swim. And that's very important as an adult, as a child, for you to know how to swim because you just never no. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember I had a nursing student once who her child passed away in in the pool because grandma didn't know how to swim and yeah and now i've been reading on that there are some devices where you put them in the pool Mm -hmm. and it will text you or call you if it senses motion in the pool because you've had the children you know who walk out and they don't the water is very enticing to them very much very very reach for a ball Uh or a toy and yes yes. so it would alert you okay there's movement in the pool to Mm -hmm. go check i remember another um um, student that I had a while back who she was having a party and her child wandered next door and by law you're supposed to empty your pool you know when you move out it was a yeah. vacant home and the child fell in the pool and they were looking for them couldn't find him for a while and when they did found him he had drowned and those are the type of things that we need to take seriously we need to do the yes. preventative measure and again if you need a free voucher I Commissioner Darlene Riggs will be more than happy to give you one whether you're a child or an adult please reach out Nine five four six zero two three one five two. So we are deviated a little, a little bit, but that is a topic that's important to me. So please check out our parks and facilities area. Again, that's the area you will also find programs. We have basketball baseball, cheerleading, football, cricket, mini sport, netball, soccer, softball, track field, volleyball, my goodness, tennis. Oh, this morning I was at um, Lakeshore Park playing tennis with Coach Kevin. I've been trying to beat Coach forever now. (laughs) I have. So you can check out that video. It's on YouTube. It's also on my social media, Facebook and Instagram. Just search Commissioner Darlene Riggs. You'll find it. It was a lot of fun, but I hate to say I lost. Damn it. (laughs) 
time. You'll get him next time. That's what my son said. But it was a lot of fun. I got a lot of feedback from that video. People were like, I didn't know you knew how to play. You know how to play. I'm like, yeah, I love tennis. We have so many tennis courts throughout the city. Yes. Children, adults, everyone, you need to get out there see where your tennis courts are and start utilizing them. That's something I plan on doing in the in the near future, a campaign. I'm thinking of calling it um, Taste of Tennis. <laughs> yeah, to see, um, to get the community out there exercising, number one. Number two, getting to know the sport. Lakeshore is under renovation now, so hopefully when, when we're done beautifying, because you know we're beauty in progress, we're always beautifying something. <laughs> so we're beautifying Lakeshore Park, so hopefully when it's done we can do a beautiful ribbon cutting and into Introduce the community to the sport of tennis. That great way nice. to exercise. Yes. Yeah, great way to exercise. So, again, we have like a lot of recreational activities. Um, camps are almost over. Well, Ample some of them theater. are. Yes, our amphitheater. You know what we'll do? One day we will have the general manager here as a guest speaker. That would be so great. he can tell us. He can tell us about um, upcoming oh, shows. Yes, and some of them. You know, I've had the opportunity of meeting Cisco. Oh, yes. And my sister and I grew up singing his songs. So, <laughs> you know, I miss a lot of events there because sometimes I have to be in several places at once. But we've had so many celebrities there. So um, Lorenzo can come and tell us all about the amphitheater and that the different things nice. that are coming up. We're looking forward to that. Um, camp is just about over because school starts. Is it next week? On the 15th. Oh, my. We're starting on a Wednesday this time. So, children, get ready for school. You know, when I went around last night, I was asking, are you ready for school? Are you ready for school? I got one yes. <laughs> <laughs> one yes. Everyone was like, all the children, nope, nope, nope. nope. That's my son's The parents are ready. I think the parents oh, are ready. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I remember <laughs> when I was would drive my kids to school. They're, like, just sitting. I'm like, get out. Yeah, like, why are you still in this car? Goodbye. It's me time. Adios. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Adios. Mm. See, mm. I'm working on my Spanish. Beautiful. So please check out MiramarFL.gov. And if you have any questions or you need direction, please go ahead and reach out to us, 954-602-3152. We also have another major event coming up. Yes. Ms. Abden will update us on that. That's around the corner, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It's called Save Money on Your Property Taxes. And that will be held Tuesday, August 14th at 7 p.m. And the location is going to be at Miramar Multi-Complex uh, Center. That is 6700 Miramar Parkway. Um, this is going to be filled with information that everyone needs to know. And Commissioner Riggs can tell you more about Marty Care. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have our one and only Broward County property appraiser coming. And he is so full of information so full of knowledge when it comes to this stuff and again I feel like it is my responsibility to make sure that we find every way to save you money so come out August 14th 7 p.m. Broward County property appraiser Marty Care will be there his staff will be there to educate you a very special thank you to Highlands Residential Mortgage and to Eli's Tires for sponsoring this event we're going to have some food for you something to drink so come hungry and come thirsty and come with a pen and paper so you can take down some notes on how to save money on your property taxes again we've had a wonderful time educating you on the miramarfl.gov website don't forget create an account so that you can get our miramar e-magazine every sunday and that is a great start to stay up with to date with what's happening in the beautiful city of miramar because remember it is right here in miramar Miramar. I'm Commissioner Darlene Riggs. Thank you again for turning into Committed to Miramar. Miramar. It's right here in Miramar.